So, um, as most of you know, um, my name is Daphne Tachelwer, I'm an attorney, and I'm the founder of an advocacy group called uh, We Are The Evidence. We advocate for the rights of people who have become injured by wireless technology, and mostly uh, for people who develop microwave sickness, which is also known as electro-hypersensitivity, electrosensitivity, and radiation sickness. Um, Microwave sickness is likely the most immediate and widespread condition caused by exposure to wireless technology radiation. And while we, are, we believe that people say there's no evidence, that you know, it doesn't exist, et cetera, et cetera, this condition is actually the first condition that was ever correlated to wireless technology when our soldiers, those who were in the Navy working with radars and radio systems, has developed the same symptoms which people with micro sickness now having. As a result, that condition was already in the medical books in the 50s and 60s. So what is really micro sickness? Micro sickness is when people develop adverse symptoms when they are exposed to radio-based technologies. It's not only from the radiation, it's from various element associated with microwave technology, like the modulation, pulsation, low frequencies, high frequencies, and microwave frequencies. Symptoms that people are developing usually when they're uh, exposed to these devices are headaches, nausea, heart palpitation, uh, tinnitus, nosebleeds, uh, cognitive problems are very, very big, especially in children in schools we see it, memory problems, tinnitus, um, other auditory effects, and many other symptoms. So essentially, anyone who develops any adverse symptoms from exposure to this technology is suffering from microwave sickness, so maybe even if it's just a symptom, a little bit headache, or pain in the head when you use a cell phone, or tingling in your hands, this is microwave sickness. Now, um, as I mentioned, the condition was actually already recognized uh, in the 70s by all the Soviet countries. Um, in 1973, all the Soviet countries already had it as medical books and were actually teaching them in, in schools. In Europe in 2009, the condition was recognized by the European Parliament and in 2011 by the Council of Europe. Um, it's actually on uh, the International Code of, Code of Diseases. It's called uh, IC10. Uh, CM T66 radiation sickness, which is caused by ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Um, in the US, in the US, as I said, the army, all, the, all our agencies essentially knew about this condition because of sickness of soldiers. And in 1982, the New York Appellate Court recognized this condition and said there's more than ample evidence to show that people can develop this condition when they're exposed to low level of microwave radiation. Uh, since then, also the Access Board, which is the federal agency that um, is uh, entrusted with putting guidelines to accommodating people with disabilities in federal buildings also, also recognize the condition. Uh, social security um, uh, agencies recognize the condition. And sorry, that's the wireless radiation, just a second. Already recognized the condition, and it has been accommodated under the ADA, the American with Disabilities Act. And maybe this is the time to mention that you know uh, President George Bush passed away, and it was actually under his administration that the American with Disabilities Act was passed. So thank him for that. I mean, we've been dealing every day with people who develop this condition, trying to be accommodated for the disability, including in schools and including children. So thank you, George Bush, for that. Um, so, I think that um, those symptoms that we associated with electrosensitivity are not just headaches and nausea, et cetera, et cetera. What the science has shown us that these symptoms actually uh, indicate a very severe physiological injury caused by exposure to this radiation. And um, while we are being told that there is no evidence, we have ample evidence. There are hundreds of studies that show that the same symptoms that people with microwave sicknesses are experiencing are and can be caused by exposure to radiation, like cardiac effect, cognitive problems, uh, various other nervous system problems, et cetera, et cetera. We also have case studies. Um, Dr. Carl Hecht, who is one of the world leading EMF experts, published a paper reviewing 1,500 studies showing microwave sickness 
is associated with exposure to this technology and over 1,000 case studies of his own patients who have the condition. We also have objective provocation studies, meaning people who have developed the condition exposed to radiation or technology and develop immediate adverse biological effect like cardiac e effect, uh, changes in blood pressure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are also subjective perception provocation study, and what I mean is studies in which people are exposed to radiation and are supposed to recognize or detect whether or not a signal is present. Those studies that were done and properly designed show that some people who suffer from this condition can also detect a signal, but not everyone can. And indeed, there are many subjective provocation studies in, in which people could not detect the signals. But usually, those studies, not surprisingly, were funded by the wireless industry. And to say, an understatement would be to say that these studies are scientific disgrace. The reason the industry is using the studies to deny the condition is because those easy, these studies are very easy to manipulate. And that is why we do not use subjective provocation study to diagnose and or to deny the existence of any condition. We do not expose a person who have asthma attack to, uh, to smog, and if that person does not get a, uh, uh, an attack, we say, okay, there's no such condition, and is, uh, does not suffer from asthma. Um, the most important flaw of these studies is none of them address the nocebo effect. They claim that it's psychological, while there's zero evidence to say it's psychological, but they essentially um, do not address the nocebo effect. So none of these studies remove the people who are affected by nocebo effect, and therefore all of these studies are not valid scientifically. So what are the physiological um, problems that were found to be associated with this condition? So um, a study that was done by Professor Dominique Papon in France has sh uh, on 700 people who developed microwave sickness showed severe injuries. All the injuries are injuries that were found to be able to be caused by exposure to microwave and uh, microwave-based technologies. Um, he found one of the things he found was people were, self, uh, were developing autoimmune responses. They had 23% uh, has antibodies in their body, which means there's autoimmune response to this radiation. Um, he found in 28% of people biomarkers that show that their blood-brain barrier was broken. And that is a very severe injury. And already from 1975, we know that these microwave frequencies can actually break the blood-brain barrier. And that was done by Dr. Ellen Fry, who worked with the Navy. Since then, dozens of studies confirm it. And we actually used microwave uh, frequencies to break the blood-brain barrier of, um, of patients, people who develop brain tumor, to get chemotherapy to their brain. So it's not maybe this technology can break your blood-brain barrier. Clearly, it cannot actually, it can actually do it. Um, it also found, um, just a second, so it also found inflammation responses. There was, for 40% of the people, there was an increase in their histamine level and that is showing chronic inflammatory responses in the body. He also found um, a decrease in, uh, in the blood, in, in a flow, sorry, blood flow of the brain, and which was affecting the limbic system and the thalamus. And um, this finding was actually confirmed in many, many other studies that show essentially this kind of brain injury with people, including children. Um, another um, problem that was found in all of the people was reduction in the levels of melatonin in the body. Melatonin is responsible for corrective processes in the body, and if your body does not have enough melatonin, the body cannot correct the problem caused by exposure to this radiation. And uh, melatonin is also involved in a process called oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress is a mechanism that was established to be caused by exposure to microwave radiation. 93 of 100 studies that were done showed that oxidative, that this radiation is causing oxidative stress. And, um, and while industry likes to say that there's no mechanism by which this radiation can affect the body to deny any non-thermal harms, oxidative stress is established mechanism conclusively shown to be caused by this radiation. Um, what in terms of diagnosis? So 
um, this condition is diagnosable because there can be various mechanisms that involve with these injuries. There's not one biomarker by which we can diagnose the condition. However, we, can, um, we still can diagnose the, con the condition. It's a clinical diagnosis based on differential diagnosis. And we have diagnostic, uh, diagnostic guidelines. Most recently, the, in, uh, in 2011, the Austrian Medical Association published guidelines on how di to diagnose microwave sickness. And in 2016, the European Academy of Environmental Medicine, um, their EMF group updated those guidelines and issued a very elaborate report on how to diagnose the condition. Um, Doctors all around the world have been using this to diagnose people, including in the US. And there's definitely growing awareness of doctors to the condition, also because many of them are becoming sick themselves. And um, this is actually encouraging because then people can be accommodated for their disability. So what is the prevalence of um, this condition in the population? We don't know. Surveys that were done up to 2006 show that at least 10% of the population already suffering from this condition. And, um, but this is before smartphone, before Wi-Fi, before uh, utility smart meters. So this is essentially before the exponential increase in our exposure to this radiation. Now those injuries also show that there is no something different in people who are electrosensitive. This is why I don't like the name electrohypersensitivity. Um, those injuries that were found with people who developed the condition are injuries that can happen in each and every person. While we may have some predisposition in people, we found some genetic predisposition, this condition can be developed by everyone. I'm finishing, sorry. Um, you know, to summarize, um, recently an appeal was uh, submitted by 240 scientists to the uh, European Parliament calling for moratorium on 5G. And they said correctly that this condition is already pan-epidemic. And we cannot, as a society, continue to ignore it. We have children who develop it, children who cannot function in society, children who want to commit uh, uh, suicide. And unfortunately, three years ago, a girl by the name of Jenny Frey, 15-year-old girl, uh, con committed, sign, uh, committed suicide. And she committed suicide because she could no longer tolerate the obliviousness of society to her problem. So we must talk about it, we must expose it, because I think this is, as I said, the most widespread condition, and we need to help people make the correlation between their symptoms to this radiation, and I do believe that that will help us cause change and expose the problems with wireless technology. Thank you. Thank you.